Hello, my name is Larry Borowski from Greenslade & Company. Welcome back to the next phase of our STF-250 screw test fixture. Today we're going to be talking about torsional strength testing. Now torsional strength testing, or torsional strength, is a screw's ability to, be, to resist being twisted in two. We're going to be using Greenslade & Company's STF-250 along with split collets today in order to do our testing. Our screw samples are number eight sheet metal screws. So another, another name for a sheet metal screw is a type A screw. So we are going to go and refer to our chart in order to find out what size collet we need and what size torque wrench we need. So if we refer to our chart, go down, go down to the 815, move over, move over until we see the 39 and that's our torsional strength for today. Let's get started gathering our tools. Like we said before we do have our 815 sheet metal screws. First thing we're going to find is our split collet, our 815 split collet. Obviously this will not fit in the, sh in the slot by itself. It requires what we call a split collet holder, which fits nicely down into the slot, and our collet fits in there. For larger screws, we have our larger screw collets. Now that would be like quarter inch and above, or an M6 and above for the larger collets. After we de decided which collets we, we need, we also know that we have 39 inch pounds as our torque that we're supposed to be trying to hit today. So we've chosen a 75 inch pound torque wrench with appropriate adapters. And we also know that we have a number two Phillips drive in the head of our screw. So we'll choose our proper bit for our bit holder and set that together in our test fixture. We are now ready to do our testing. A little bit more on the split collets. The standards tell us that we need to clamp the thread screw without deforming the threads. Um, the only way to really do that is to have something that's already tapped. So what we have is we've developed these split collets that act as little little vices. And they have threads in them, therefore they clamp around the screw threads without deforming them. They're made of hardened tool steel, and they're also annealed to maintain toughness so they don't crack while using them. There's two different ways to put the screw into, into the collet. The first way is to just kind of start it while it's in your hand and then place it into the collet holder. Well, sometimes that's just because of tolerancing and the way the screw's sitting in there doesn't quite want to work for you. So the way I like to do it is just drop the collet into the holder, start the screws, start your screws in there. Drop the whole mechanism back into your channel. Take your course adjustment, bring it down just over your screw head. Adjust your positioning a little bit. Drop the bit into the head. What this does is ensures everything's in a nice straight line and rigid. Nothing's going to pop out. Then you go ahead and tighten up your side clamps to make sure that you are properly clamping the thread. The idea is to not let the fastener twist while you're doing this. You want all the torsh all the twisting to be in the shank of the screw. You don't want it to slip. So we torque. Our minimum we said was 39, and there we are at 39, we're at 40, approaching 45, 46, 47, 
47. And there you see we've snapped the head off at 47, so our screws do meet the minimum. Now we could have either stopped at 39 or and said they were good or kept going until breakage like we did. Well, our test went fairly straightforward and well, but there are some things that you may run into while you're testing other screws. You may get screws that are excessively long. They're three, four inches long that you're trying to test. Well, you're, you're, what you can do is actually just chop the screw down. It doesn't affect the torsional strength at all because it, torque is the same along the entire length of a screw. Whether you shorten it or it's a short one or a long one doesn't matter. You just shorten it to what you need and you, and you go down the road. Now the other thing is you might run into very short screws where you barely have any threads. Now you, when you're testing and you put your screws in your collet, you want to make sure that you at least have a couple of threads, one to two threads above the top surface of your collet. So those are for the really short screws because you don't want to be bearing down on the head. What you're trying to do when you're doing a torsional strength test is completely isolate the fastener so all you're dealing with is, is the torque. You're not dealing with any underhead friction. You're not dealing with any other forces that might be acting on it. That's why where the STF-250 comes in because you can clamp on those threads and maintain rigidity so you're not at driving at an angle and everything's tight and seated and you're, you've isolated everything except for the torsional strength. I bet you didn't think we'd be breaking things today, did you? Anyways, be sure to check our website and come back and visit our YouTube channel for new videos and instructions on how to test and gauge fasteners. If you'll take a look behind me, you'll see the posters that I was referring to earlier in, during the testing. Um, these are nice handy references to hang on the wall in your office or even right there out in the shop where you're using the equipment. Um, we also have it in book form and all this is at no cost to you. So if you have any questions or want any wall charts or, or FIP 1000 specification booklets, don't hesitate to give us a call or email us. We'll always be there.